My saw blades were on the floor because I don't have any storage for them, but one day I was about to cut my foot from a saw blade that wasn't spinning and I knew I had to find a solution. In my workshop I tend to encounter problems like this and the best part about that is trying to solve them. I have three of them I want to share and I'll also throw in a couple of 3D prints that will just save you a ton of money in the workshop. After almost encountering the embarrassing foot injury from a saw blade not in use, I started thinking about a solution but ended up encountering a couple of other problems as well. Here's the first one. I have a problem with utility blades. That's not a knife. That's a knife. I mean, I love them as they are, they're great, but whenever I get a new blade for my knife, I'm standing there holding the old blade like a buffoon. I don't know where to put it. I look at the trash can, but I know better than that. That's another easy way to hurt myself on sharp tools not in use. The cases the blades come in are genius, but there's no real easy way of putting the old ones back in without mixing them with the new blades. Well, some have it covered, but that's rare. And I just had to come up with a solution for it. So I spent some time at the computer looking at AI photos, and then I spent some time investigating the best type of toilet paper. But then I finally got into CAD modeling to find a good solution for my utility blades. As I was drawing up my solution, I also printed another useful tool for my next project that utilizes a utility blade. I'll be using some edge banding and I've always considered buying an edge band trimmer. But then I found this file on Maker World that utilizes a utility blade. I printed that. And this is a once in a lifetime print. I'll be using it sparsely. And buying one of these is at least $20. And this cost me about four. Kudos to the designer, great design, link in the description. You're welcome. All right, so this is the solution I came up with for the utility blades. This is a wall mount and inside of that goes this container, just pushes inside like that. The container has small tabs at the end, so whenever it's pushed into the container, it's not gonna fall out, which I guess is a good thing. At the top of the containers is a small slot where you can put the utility blades and uh, they go inside the container. That slot also serves another feature. If you have the snap-off blades, you put the blade inside that slot, you break it off, and it goes inside the container. And once you're ready to go to the tip, you just take the container with you. There's a snap-on lid, just so if you, you know, have to emergency brake or something, they won't fly around the car. Put that in, it's a snap-in lid. And you take this to the tip and you empty it and you're good to go. And you put this on the wall. And if you ever have like bent screws or whatever, you can just take the container out and put them in, of course. Small problem, but solved. On to the next issue. When I first started woodworking, there were so many things I felt like I had to buy. I saw all these fantastic YouTubers make awesome things and they had awesome tools. Well, nowadays, I would suggest getting a 3D printer and just print some of those things instead. At least as a starting point, like this parallel marking gauge. Great use case and the cost in filament is like next to zero. There are so many things created that could be printed and the library of free files is ever growing as the community is getting bigger and bigger and more and more companies are getting into it as well. Why not a bottle opener for the MFT table? Have yourself a cool drink at the end of the workday. Whilst on that topic, here are some of the tricks that I use to get better prints. Whenever it happens that the print won't stick, I use one of these liquid glues for the bed. I like that better than the old school glue because it doesn't leave any residue on the bed or the print. And the best part is that I use it like once a month and it's really long lasting. But another trick is to up the temperature a bit of the first layer in the slicer. Just a couple of degrees will do. For strength, there's a common misconception that all you need to do is raise the infill to a higher percentage. Instead, what you want to do is raise the amount of walls. What I usually do is raise it up to around 4 walls, and of course you can change the infill together with the amount of passes on the walls. The same goes for the bottom and top layers, depending on what you're printing, you can bump those up a bit as well. When it comes to what types of filament I use, I have it narrowed down pretty much in my workshop. For the most part, I just use matte PLA. I like the matte look more than the shiny one, and for the most part, PLA is just enough for me. 
When I need stronger filament, recently I've only used ABS GF, which is glass fiber reinforced ABS. It's stiff, strong and heat resistant up to 99 degrees. And you guessed it, it has a matte finish as opposed to the regular ABS. Okay, next issue. I don't have a lot of space for sustainers. Most of them are stored away right now, but some of them are still in the workshop because I need them. This one, for instance. This is the sustainer with all the dominoes. And although they are perfectly stored in this sustainer, I would like to find a better solution because every time I need the dominoes, I can bet you money it is going to be in the bottom of my little trolley here. I want to be able to get them quicker. So here's my plan. I wanted a domino dispenser, like an ammunition holder for dominoes. So I was preparing. I even bought a pest dispenser and took it apart to be able to see what I would need to make something like it. My kids were all over the place eating all the candy that came with it. And then one morning I did a search and I found this. And sometimes you learn the lesson again and again and again. Research before you make. This is available on Maker World. Someone beat me to it. But then I also realized that maybe this isn't the best storage solution for me. So I just printed boxes for my dominoes and placed them in a drawer. Much easier to get than through the sustainer, but still a good solution. I did, however, come up with this wall mounted version, so I'll print that and try it out. Another print regarding the dominoes are these dry fit dominoes. Great print saves me dominoes for glue ups because I don't waste them on dry fits where I then ruin them while getting them out. The problem has always been that I always forget to order more dominoes but then I was really happy because I was sent these router bits. Just look at them, very cool. These are router bits to make your own custom dominoes. So all I would need to do is mill some wood to the correct thickness, say 10 millimeters, and then hook up the 10 millimeter bit with the router and adjust the fence and try it out. And then I could cut them to length. And then I went a bit overboard because I wanted them to have the grooves that the original dominoes have that I think play a role for glue and air. So I modeled up a small stamp and then I stamped my custom dominoes with them to make them look even more like the real deal, but hopefully also work like the real deal. Now the 3D print was done and I could try it out. The holes for attaching it to the wall are then covered up and that will also tell me what the size of the domino is. And that's that. I guess it works, but it's not the best solution. This might be the most urgent thing. I have this big dust collector, but no pipes. And that's a future upgrade. But for now, I wanted to have a way to use it to just vacuum the floors. And previously I've made this. This is the magnetic dust connection that you've probably already seen all over the place. My version has the magnets embedded inside the print because I was scared they would come out if the glue failed. So I use them all the time. I have them on all my machines. But now I need a handle, so I modeled that up and here it is, a vacuum handle. So if I touch that, I can use that to vacuum the floor. Of course, I would need a longer hose to reach, but I will upgrade my dust collection system with 3D printing in the future. Stay tuned. I also had this other idea. I've been meaning to get bench cookies. I remember that the H2D from Bamboo Lab has a great advantage where I can print in different materials and interlace them. So I loaded the printer up with TPU and PLA and designed my own bench cookie. And then I printed them. I decided to print them in halves because the TPU side always gets really stuck to the print bed, but also it has this pattern. So in the middle, I just printed a small ring that will help me align them in the glue up. Quick verdict on the bench cookies. Uh, they're not that rubbery, but I think they would work just as they are. Uh, another option is to use another type of TPU. This was kind of the stiffest that I used. I think a squishier one would be even better. Before I get to the table saw blade issue, I've done a couple of these videos in the past and it's been a while and I wanted to let you guys know what 3D prints I have shared in the past that I still use all the time. The best of the best, so to speak. So without further ado, here they are in no apparent order. 
the aforementioned magnetic dust connectors. There are options out there, but this is my version with the magnets embedded. The way that works is that I just print a cavity and then I pause the printer before the printer fills those cavities. Then insert the magnets and resume the print. I also have two versions of this because apparently some hose brands have the threads going the other direction. And accompanied to this, I will now throw in the handle as a printable as well. Another one of my own prints is this sand paper storage. Since I made mine, there have popped up several versions and mine isn't necessarily the best. I just wanted to claim that I was the ideator of this bad boy, I guess. Number three, I still use this circle center finder all the time because as a woodworker, we tend to do round objects and that's when this comes in handy. This sheet carrying handle has been used over and over again. You can certainly buy these, but this can be printed and it's worked great for me and it's PLA. What can I say? I'm not a fanboy of PETG. Lastly, my absolute favorite use case for the 3D printer is making custom solutions when I'm working on a project. Like with this chair I made. I 3D printed a bunch of templates for it. And by the way, those files are available for free if you want to make it, and the instructions are available on Festool's website for free as well. I also made similar templates when I made this bench. And of course, that requires a bunch of knowledge on how to be able to draw those things up in CAD. And to many people, CAD modeling seems like a far reach. But I think I found a hack to actually help you out there. Because I've always found that taking an entire course on something sometimes is too much to take in. I'd rather learn how to make something and then gain knowledge that way. That's how I learned to play the guitar. I learned one song because I wanted to play that song and once I knew that song, I it was easier learning more songs and eventually I knew all the chords. Because of that insight, I recently made a short course on how to use Fusion to create custom drawer storage boxes. And although that course is specific to only do just that, it gives a good starting point into Fusion in a very easy way. And this month I'm adding a follow along where I show exactly how I drew up this chair in Fusion and you can tag along and do it yourself. Or you can just learn how it can be done. And that follow along is free and available on my website. So let's solve those saw blade issues. Finally, I have a pile of saw blades here. They're just lying on the floor for now. Why are they on the floor you might ask? Well, I have no good storage for them. But then I remembered, I designed this a year ago or so, I call it the nipple. A very simple wall attachment for saw blades. But I'm not sure I want to cover the workshop walls with saw blades. But I have an idea where I could still use the nipple. You see, the nipple has an advantage compared to the regular machine screw and knob that I see used. I'm still talking about this 3D print, by the way. This doesn't require any hardware, equals cheaper, but it still holds the blade in place safely. And I have seen some storage solutions, but most of them are either taking up too much wall space or they're held to the case by a screw on knob. And you have to take all of them out to get to the blade you want. And I don't want them on the wall in this workshop, so I was thinking, could I make a case for them? So I've been drawing up a solution I think might actually be good. This is the deal. I used the same nipple to hold the blade in place, but I've got sort of a drawer solution for them. And then I want the case to store several blades, but I also want it to have a handle and protection for when I take the blades with me, if I ever do. So this is what I came up with. To start, we have the blade storage. This has the same nipple in the middle, but it also has a handle and is kind of like a drawer. Then we have this, this is the case for it. And if I drop a nut into this cavity here and then cover that up with this little print, that should fit right above the nut. And then screw in the handle with these machine screws. As you can see, it has some dovetail tracks. The plan is that I can attach them to the bottom track. Then they will just act like feet for the case. Then I can place the blades inside and then lift the handle and bring the blades like a bag. But if I want to lay this down, say in the car, then I can slide the feet off and slide them on at the top instead. And then they will prevent the blades from coming out. This was made for blade storage for the regular 30 mm bore and the files are uploaded to Maker World. You will need a large format printer for this and a lot of print time, but it actually works great. <laughs> this is actually really good. And 
I mean, I like it. I was scared the weight would actually be too much, but uh, it's no problem at all. I think there is room for another upgrade, uh, which would be to make every other blade holder have an offset on the handle, say two circles on this side. That way it would be easier to get, if I want to get the blade in the center. This is quite finicky, but uh, I mean, it's not that hard, but it's, you know, could be easier. But I'm really happy about this. Another feature is I can actually use the handle to hang it. Uh, there are hooks on my table so I can hang it on or I can just leave it standing on the, the floor. I would say problem solved. <laughs>